there. Today I am going to play with stamps. Again, I don't know that I would call this a tutorial. I am not an expert on doing anything with stamps, but I just got these new stamps in and wanted to play with them. So I thought, well, I'll record it and maybe I'll share what it is and maybe someone will learn something or be inspired to craft. This first set is from Prima and it's uh, they're cling mounted stamps, so generally speaking, you're going to use a mounting block for those. They have all kinds of fun things on them. There's tea and a clock. There's the best moments, time flies, a love story, welcome, crowns, of course. So there's all kinds of fun things in this one. Then this one is also from Prima. This is the Art Decor Fashion Clear Stamps. These are stamps that you can also use with um, a mounting block, but I also know a couple of some other ways we can use these. So I thought we could play around with those as well. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna open this one up. I'm really excited about this. Oops, it's sticking to itself. Oh, there we go. All right. So they come like this, and I'm just going to pull it out. There is, this is now sandwiched between two clear pieces of uh, plastic. There's a top piece and a bottom piece. This is a great way to store these so that they stay clean, and you want to clean your stamps every time you use them. Uh, I know not everyone does, but I wanted to take a look at some of these. I'm not quite sure. Some of them, it looks like it's, this, is, this looks like it's French, and of course we've got Paris over here. This looks like something that was a canceled stamp. There's an address here, maybe a business. Um, Industrie d'amateur. Um, there are little things. This is like a ticket. So this looks like all kinds of fun things. This is actually one whole stamp that you could stamp on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and use it as ephemera. So lots of lots of fun things. But the first place I wanted to start was back over in this journal that I made for myself. I made this a while back. If you are interested in seeing the entire flip through, I'll put a link to that video down below. But this was a journal I made for myself to have fun and just play around with. So I went to, I found a page, and what I have, this is a piece of chipboard, the wooden kind, because when stamping, we want a nice firm surface. So if I were to stamp on maybe this next page, you can see there's a lot of different surfaces here. That would be too hard and, and the stamping will not turn out nicely. So I just went and got a piece of chipboard and thought, let's do that. Um, one of the things that's really fun to do, I think, and I'm gonna try it because I've actually never done it before, but let's see what happens if we um, take a large page. And here's the thing, I'll show you. I used a stamp on this, a similar type stamp right here. Um, so we're going back a few pages from that. And I was looking for a page that was um, not, um, too wrinkly. I think the more wrinkly it is, the more, uh, you know, it's just not going to turn out as well. But this was something I wanted to play around with and see if I could do this. And that is where you take these big clings and you don't actually put them on a block. Ooh, this is tougher to get off than I thought it was going to be. But you don't actually attach them. Maybe let's just go with something a little bit smaller now that I'm thinking about it. Because um, I was trying to get this really big one off. Maybe we'll just play with some of the easier stamps to do. Um, oh, here's an idea. Okay, I'm going to peel this one off. Which is the ticket. 
So it looks like a ticket. It's about that size. I'm going to take a piece of paper. This is a crown punch. And actually, I'm looking at this, and I think that this is going to be bigger than this, isn't it? Oh, no, it won't be. So again, like I said, I'm just going to play around with this. And I'm going to put this crown right here. And then I think I'm going to try this with the black ink and see if we can get this to turn out. I'm going to go ahead and mount this to my block. And we want to kind of line it up. There's grid marks on these mounting blocks. And yes, I have it upside down. That's okay. Going to go ahead and pounce it a couple of times there. And then I'm going to put, this is just, I, again, I just punched out a crown. And I'm going to hold it right there. And we're going to stamp right over top of it. And then when you pull it out, you should be able to see the crown. Well, that didn't work, and I'm realizing that was upside down. That's why I couldn't read it. I was like, wait, what is that? So that, that was one thing I wanted to play with. Eh, probably not very successful. But let's play around maybe with some of these other stamps. I'm going to grab these out. Um, these are the, enough, the other set. These are a little bit easier, I think, to work with. Oh, let's do this, where we've punched out the crown. Maybe let's go back and put a crown in there. <laughs> let's see what happens if we do that. I think this crown is going to work really, really well. These are also clean mounted, so I can just mount it like that. And then we'll go back with some black ink again. And let's see what happens if we put a crown in the middle of that. Ah! Oh, I think that turned out really cute. So that's one of the ways you can do it. You can go back in and stamp. So the first time I ever did one of these journals, I actually um, did the stamping after I sewed the signatures in. I didn't know any better. And finally someone said, well, you should stamp before you sew them in. But here's an alternative if you actually decide you want to go back and stamp. This shows you that, and this was using um, where you have negative space and then fill it. Can you see that? I think that is so cute. Yes, it's upside down. And if I was doing this for someone else, I would be upset. But for me, I'm just having fun. And that's what the whole point was for this journal. The other thing you can do, of course, are tags. And I'm gonna grab just some paper over here. Tags are a lot of fun to do, again, with that negative space idea. I think this time, though, I am going to use a round punch instead. This is a one and a half inch punch. I just punched out a round punch. We'll put that in the middle there. This time, I know that these are really big, but I really, really, really want to use this. So be patient while I try to get this off. <laughs> they are they, These things really, really stick. Um, and they're, they're kind of stretchy, and I, I'm trying not to really just rip the whole thing off, but that may be the only thing I can do. If you know of an easier way to get these things off with the, other than just yanking on them, please post a comment because again, like I said, I really don't know a whole lot about stamping and stamps and all that. So really <laughs> would love your advice on how to get these cling stamps off. When they say cling, they are not kidding. These suckers are on here really well. All right, I think I got it going. And we're gonna just keep yanking on this until we can get it off. Wow, this is challenging at best. All right, I don't want it to stick back down again, though. We're almost there. We're almost there. A little bit more. I win. 
I got it off. All right. So this is the top. And I want to, I'm just going to do a stamp with a little negative space there. I think we'll just use one side of this. So this is kind of the cool thing you can do because it's um, flexible, I'm folding back half of this. And so it's kind of sticking to itself. But I can use half and I'm just going to kind of ink up that half and then we're going to start let's start at the bottom and just kind of ink our way up that kind of looks like the middle I'm trying to go over that circle and we're just going to ink our way up all the way across and then we're going to just pull it off and that kind of sort of worked Mm, but not as well as I would have liked for it to have. Um, but that's okay. Like I said, I'm just here to play and hopefully inspire you to try something different today as well. Um, so let's put something in that negative space too. Hmm. Woo, I like that one. Let's do this one instead and yep I just got ink all over my fingers I don't think you're really crafting if you're not getting yucky though right all right let's see what happens here we're gonna put that in the middle of that negative space and there you have a kind of a cute tag that just needs some something around the edges so let's just dirty up those edges And it looks like, to me, I'm okay that it's not perfect. But I think with practice, I'll get better at doing this kind of technique uh, where I can do it. And I have seen lots of tags that are really cute that they're just putting a couple of things on it. So let me grab another tag real quick and maybe we'll just do a quick tag where all we're going to do is just throw a couple of different stamps on there. I'm gonna use, ooh, I think I'm gonna use one of each. Uh, let's see. Let's see what happens if we do the Paris one. And just do that. We'll start with that. We're gonna put that on the cling. Pull straight up. Let's do this. In the middle. And then I'm going to grab this one real quick and do this across the bottom. And it'll hang off a little bit, but that's okay. So if you're looking for great flat tags, you'll find that using a stamps is a great way to do a flat tag. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me stamp today, and I hope I've encouraged you to be crafty.